Hello everybody, what's going on? Back again, doing the double duty over here, two videos today, but this time we are keeping up with something we've been do something we've been doing lately. We went over the exchanges for derivatives trading. This time we're going to go over the decentralized exchanges, the DEXs. And so we're gonna get into it first. We already had quotes of the day, but we're doing it again. So this time, I believe the role of the government is too big. Society must be more decentralized. From Pavel Durov. Great quotes. And I just, I'm liking this guy more and more just off the little bit that I've seen of him here today. today. And the other one, to be truly free, you should be ready to risk everything for freedom. Very nice, very nice. Got the Pirates Life for Me logo there. I'm going to be doing something. Uh, I'm going to be tweaking that one a little bit here in the future. I just haven't had time. Maybe I'll do it uh, maybe tomorrow or something. And we got the the revenge there. Our pirate ship looking uh, dangerous. But coming over here, just real quick, wanted to hit this. I like this Pavel Durov guy. He's got some really good uh, little quotes going on here on Brainy Quote. I use it sometimes to get some of these little daily quotes, but privacy is not for sale and human rights should not be compromised out of fear or greed. Amen, brother. Let's see. Whenever technological advancement is made, it can always be used for both good or for bad. Same thing goes with crypto as we can see. And, you know, I'll leave a link to this uh, guy's little quote page here. It's, it's got some decent stuff. I don't know. If you guys are into that, the little motivation thing, you know, if you throw little quotes. I know I used to have sticky notes here and there with uh, some inspirational quotes. And I should probably get back to it, especially for how many, uh, like, nonfiction military books I've read. There's always good stuff in there always but looking at the chart real quick before we get into the dexes look at monero was going super hard today has the best chart of the day out of any that i've seen was just standing strong going 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 gone we're pulling back a little bit here but it looks like we've got the vwap coming up and money flow potentially coming back down on a nice big curvature But we shall see. I mean, worst case, maybe we get a little scalp out of it. Maybe we hit a new high, come back down. This guy comes low and we end up with a bearish divergence. But it could still be one more good scalp out of that. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on it. Um, going over real quick. Uh, Gallo was going. Look at that. Had a super pump today. Sandy had a super pump. Big pullback so far, though. Look at that. Damn. Mana, Decentraland was having a nice big pump. Seemed like it was kind of a metaverse and privacy coin kind of day. Uh, there was a couple others, but I don't remember at the moment. I know we were looking at Polkadot before. <clears throat> Ended up turning back generally like everybody else was. So never did go into a long position. And after I saw it turning, I just... Ended up doing something else. So that's where we're at. Close off with the Bitcoin coming up and rolling over. I figures, man, right when I left to go get something to eat is when we start having an uptrend. But what you're going to do, that's life. Uh, all right. Close that out. <coughs> so over here, back on coin market crap, we're looking at the exchange menu item, the DEXs. And over here, it shows us, you know, daily volume, percent of market share. I'm assuming that's for like all exchanges because, you know, for the top one over here to have 0.0023% market share. Yeah. Um, this is nice too. And it tells you the type, which when it comes to decentralized exchanges, you generally have really two types. You've got your swap, which is like like Uniswap up here that we'll get to in a second. Or you have the order book type, which is more like what you would normally see on an exchange, like a centralized one or, well, they're all centralized, I guess. But, you know, like your Bybits and Femex and Binance and Coinbase and all that stuff. 
And so it's nice that it tells you which one it is. The blanks, I don't know. I guess I'd have to go and look and see. Uh, launched, you know, you know how long it's been around, whether it's a new guy on the block or it's, you know, it's an OG and it's stayed in the game this long. Number of markets, you know, the different coins and tokens available. Pancake swap, killing it with the 4100 Uniswap V2. The 17, that's, you know, that's really the big OG decentralized exchange slash swap. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. I'm going to start with Uniswap V3. Just a heads up. And as you can see, there is not much to it. Personally, I, I'm, I'm not big on like the, the basic swaps. They definitely have their uses because there are some tokens that you really just can't get anywhere else, at least not easily. You know, you might have to go to some some backwoods exchange, go down the hill, talk to little Bubba, and he's going to sit there and uh, try to sell you some chickens, some Rhode Island Reds, and out of nowhere might hit you with that. You going to fuck these chickens? You got to be careful out in the backwoods. Just saying, folks. <laughs> and if you've never seen uh, House of a Thousand Corpses or Devil's Rejects, you won't know what the hell I was just talking about and probably think I'm a crazy person. But, you know, you got your main menu up here. You got your swap, your pool, your governance voting. And charts is, meh. you know, it's nothing special. It's not a trading view chart. You're basically just getting, you know, the top 10s and then the top 10 pools, recent transactions, volume, um, total volume, I think, for all of Uniswap. So again, nothing, uh, you know, nothing too fancy. Just simple little price chart. So obviously you're not going to be doing no technical analysis over here on Uniswap. Basically, it's just exists mainly for one purpose, and that is to swap one token for another. So in this case, if you were swapping ETH for USDC, you know, you click that, come down, you got your list of things you can swap for. Same up here. You can search, or you can even paste in the, the um, you know, the hash address. Now up here, you've got your network. So you got, you know, your ERC-20, your Ethereum network, Polygon, Optimism, Arbitrum. And in order to use these, you need to connect a wallet. Most often used is MetaMask up here. Connect up your MetaMask. And then it just literally pulls right from the wallet. Does the swap. Drops it back in. Not too much on the settings. Again, it's very simple. Just straightforward you know pretty much all of the development work goes into the actual mechanics behind the scenes um i forget what this one uses oh well oh real quick and if you wanted a little description there's usually one here, apparently not this time, but I guess Uniswap need no introduction, maybe. Moving over to Pancake Swap. Now, obviously, this one looks a little nicer. It's kind of fun. It's got the bunny with the pancakes. You can't go wrong. But it's the same general principle. You know, you get a little chart here, which can be nice that it's on one page. And then you got your swap. You, know, you can turn it off and it looks just like Uniswap come over here and now you are the one thing you want to be careful of or even kind of look up ahead of time is you want to make sure that you are using no I'm not using but say you got your wallet connected you want to make sure what you know layer one chain your tokens are on 
because you don't want to um because pancake swap goes off of uh, binance smart chain so you don't want to be trying to transfer your erc 20s you know through pancake swap onto binance smart chain because that is how you lose your your coins you lose your tokens um and you got little options you know transaction speed slippage tolerance now slippage let's just read this setting a high slippage tolerance can help transactions succeed but you may not get such a good price used with caution now slippage is essentially when you you know you want you know however much i don't know say you're doing 100 bnb going to pancake price is 0.0159031 bnb per cake slippage tolerance 0.5 percent so basically it is putting that order, you know, out there into the liquidity pool, essentially. And by the time, you know, the order goes through and the order fills, maybe it has to split it up amongst, uh, you know, a couple transactions or something. As it does that, the, the amount that you are paying for it can fluctuate. And so the amount that fluctuates is the slippage. And so your slippage tolerance holds it within, in this case, you know, 0.5% of, you know, whatever you're paying or getting or your total. Now, I may not have that 100%, but that's essentially what it is. And there used to be some significant enough problems with uh, early versions of swaps was that people would kind of game the system in a way that you would make out better in one direction and people would get hit with a lot more slippage on the other side of the transaction. I don't remember how they were doing it, but it became enough of a problem that, you know, these exchanges were like going out of their way to alleviate that problem. And I imagine that slippage tolerance we saw a minute ago was part of that. But quick description, Pancake is decentralized exchange for swapping BEP20 tokens on Binance Smart Chain. Very important. Pancake Swap uses an automated market maker model which or where users trade against a liquidity pool such pools are filled with users funds they deposit them into the pool receiving liquidity provider tokens in return they can use those tokens to reclaim their share plus a portion of the trading fees the lp tokens are called flip tokens pancake swap also allows users to farm additional tokens cake and syrup on the farm users can deposit lp tokens locking them up in a process that rewards users with cake users can stake cake tokens to receive syrup which will have further functionality as government governance tokens and as tickets and lotteries so basically if you don't know what a liquidity pool is is you know when you have all this staking they have this pool of uh like i hate to say coins it's kind of like the cliche thing you go to but they have this uh pool of assets that helps so when people go to make a swap you are not stuck waiting on another person i believe i gotta look this back up it's been freaking forever since i actually went through these terms but essentially it is providing liquidity for the swap to help speed up and ease transactions i probably just said i should have said that in the first place and third so that was pancake coming down the list a little bit because there's just a whole bunch of them and you know i'm sure you've heard of sushi swap it's basically the same thing <clears throat> um Honey and Spooky Swap. You know, the names have gotten around a little bit. Getting into the smaller stuff here, though. But there is... Here we go. Thorchain ERC20. Matter of fact, we'll do the little description here. Thorchain is the first decentralized exchange in the world to enable cross-train trading. Very cool. And we have it over here. So when you first get to, you know, Thor Swap. 
this is kind of what you see. This is the dashboard here. And then you go to the swap. Very familiar looking. As you see, we have Bitcoin on here. Now, as far as I know, I believe they actually <clears throat> are working on the actual Bitcoin blockchain. Whereas on other ones, yeah, it's the native network. Whereas on some other swaps, you would have wrapped Bitcoin because they're working on the Ethereum, like the ERC-20 network. Or the other ones like, you know, BSC and stuff. BEP-2, original. <clears throat> ERC-20. So this one is definitely cool that you can swap between chains. And this can be important. Important because let's say say you got a Binance account and you bought you know some ERC20 token and at the time that you bought it when you went to transfer it to your wallet let's say gas fees were freaking outrageous and it was trying to tax you $60 gas fees just to transfer and you're like oh my gosh dude like that's not even worth it and so maybe you transferred it to your MetaMask or whatever on the Binance Smart Chain. So it's sitting on your MetaMask, you know, on the BNB network, well, BSC technically. What you can do now, which was actually part of the reason that I actually did do that for a few of them, because they were small holdings. I'm like, dude, if I pay a giant gas fee, I basically halves my position or more at the time when it was super high. Um, what you can do now is, you know, now that you'll be able to go in between chains, I would double check onto it first because if you do do something wrong or it doesn't work for whatever the token is that you have, then you can kind of get stuck <clears throat> in this uh, wrong chain limbo out in purgatory. And it can be a pain in the ass to get it back. It just depends, but... You know, if you're trying to transfer between chains and it's not something very straightforward, like in here, then I would definitely just look it up real quick and see, you know, what people say. Or you can even, you know, do a search for uh, Thor swap, you know, BSC to ERC20 or something. And again, you know pick your stuff down here got the mighty thor and the dune stone what was that south park thing the dune stone of undoing <laughs> oh god that's a great show so we got yeah we got you know most of the big stuff some of the smaller interesting things i'm not very familiar with box Wrapped Bitcoin. Yeah, there you go. So there's Bitcoin on ERC-20. Yeah, when you see these WBTCs, anytime you see the W at the beginning of, you know, like a regular thing, usually a wrapped. What do we got? Bitcoin BBP2. Bitcoin Cash on the native. So it looks like we got all the native tokens up here and native chains. Obviously, Rune is native to the swap itself. And again, you know, you got your rate, you got your slippage percentage, minimum received, network fee, total fee, transaction fee. And I do like that they've got these little tool tips next to everything. So it kind of explains it for you. Add liquidity, withdraw, manage liquidity, pending deposit, cross-chain savings coming soon. Hmm. Interesting. View pool analytics and your settings. And again, just like the rest of them, connect your wallet because it is not a centralized exchange. So you are not, they aren't taking custody of your crypto. They don't hold your keys. I mean, they do have a wallet that you can use, but it is your wallet, not, you know, their centralized cold storage or whatever it may be. And of course, you know, they got eh, some other little stuff, liquidity pool, which you're going to see with most, if not all of them. What's the stats? What do we got here? So volume, liquidity, network, users, transactions, 1.6 million transactions. Is that all time? 
again, you know, it's not the hugest. I mean, we're not exactly, we're not talking Binance level over here or even Uniswap V2 or 3 level. And again, coming back to the Uniswap, if you don't see what you want to swap for, on there keep in mind you can go back to uniswap v2 which has the 1700 pairings compared to the 644 over on v3 and when so if you go to where to go where to go where to go you go to the thor chain here you follow this you go to this it sends you to thorchain.org, not the actual swap at first. But they have a whole bunch of other stuff. If you were an ecosystem and then you go to, I think it was links. I think I hit swap and then links. Got here somehow. You'll figure it out. They actually have a number of different ones. You got Rango Exchange, Shapeshift, Thor Swap, which is the one I did the web app. Asgardex. Just a desktop app. Skip. DeFi spot. Dragon's decks. Now why it's only on Twitter. Maybe it just doesn't uh, exist yet. Maybe it's in development or something. I don't know. I'll probably never use it. So who gives a crap. And then Thor Wallet. I think. Uh, got a VeChain wallet somewhere. VeChain Thor. But coming back over here. Now, number one on the list, Didix. I'm calling it Didix. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to say it, but I'll give this a read real quick because it is the number one highest volume decentralized exchange they got here. Didix is the developer of a leading non-custodial decentralized exchange on a mission to build open, secure, and powerful financial products. Didix runs on audited smart contracts on Ethereum, which eliminates the need to trust a central exchange. It's basically defining decentralized exchange. The exchange combines the security and transparency of a decentralized exchange with the speed and usability of a centralized exchange. To significantly scale trading, Didix and Starkware have built a layer two protocol for cross margin perpetuals <laughs> based on Starkware's Stark X scalability engine and Didix's perpetual smart contracts. Traders can now trade with zero gas costs, lower trading fees, and reduced minimum trade sizes. Traders can go long or short with 25x leverage on a bunch of shit. Huh. Interesting, is it not? And here we are. Over here, trade Didix exchange on the ETH USD chart. And would you look at that? We got a slider that doesn't work. <laughs> but here, you know, you can enter in your leverage or you can just 2x, 5x, 10x up to 20. And it looks a lot more like a traditional exchange and again if you want to do some little like paper trading or something like that you want to do some practice you could jump over to the test net but if you're trading make sure you're on the main net language portfolio is just you know what you're holding and then come back to trade and then your all markets little drop down right there and you've got all the different ones you can trade with. Yeah, back to looking ugly. Now, if you remember from the previous exchange video where these guys are constantly flickering and moving and the, you know, the walls are coming in and out. You notice that this one is uh, it's a little chill. You know, it's just, it's, it's a little baked. It's sitting back, chilling, eyes a little bit low, and it's, it's not trying to go nowhere fast because this one is not going to have 
you know, the, the high volume, high liquidity of your Bybits and Femex and, you know, all the way up to your Coinbase, your Binance, your uh, Gemini, all that. <clears throat> it is still a decentralized exchange. Decentralized exchanges, although they are catching on and they are starting to get big and they do have, you know, a big amount of people that use them. Obviously, we're not talking, you know, your big time day trading people especially right now for that matter. What is it? 1130 over here central. So looks generally the same as our other ones did. You know, you got your depth chart on the books, your funding, and you can see there's our zero line. So we've been generally in the negative on the funding rate. It's kind of cool that they had it in a chart. And you got your contract details, just like we showed you in the other video. Kind of cool. You got a link to your white papers and websites if you want to know more about the asset. But just like the other decentralized exchanges, the swaps, you connect your wallet. You're not storing <clears throat> your crypto directly, you know, in their custody. So I gather. I, I can't say 100% on this one. I haven't dug into... Uh, did it super hard. God, that sounds so terrible. Sounds like I'm saying dicks. <laughs> Dick, yeah, man, what a name. What a name. But you know what? I appreciate the fact that they are doing a decentralized option, uh, not, uh, uh, contracts exchange because I'm hoping that, you know, it's going to catch on. We're going to get more companies that invest in creating these decentralized um like actual trading exchanges because we are certainly going to reach a point where governments are going to keep cracking down on you know a lot of these other exchanges you know be it you know bybit femex okx all them because they at the moment they don't want us citizens particularly in you know who are in the u.s they don't want them doing derivative trading which super hypocritical freaking ir irritates the crap out of me and you know it's like, oh it's it's okay for all your freaking buddies on wall street to be over here doing insanely huge leverage bets that could potentially wipe out you know, send us into a friggin' depression if something happened and, you know, everybody got liquidated. And they're over here, you know, obviously doing, you know, all the short squeeze. Oh, they're doing all the massive shorts, like wrecking companies if they want to. Yeah, people fighting back a little bit with the short squeezes. But if it gets to a point where we can't go on any of those, um, derivatives exchanges at least if we have the decentralized ones <clears throat> you know we'll have a place to go we'll have a place to trade and at a time like that you know everybody's going to flood to it at least everybody who knows about it and we will see that volume skyrocket and who knows they'll probably come over to there and try to tell them to shut everybody down stop it you know Try to get force them into doing KYC or something like that. And we're off on the arms race again where we'll just get more companies. You know, they keep popping up, get shut down, pop up, shut down, move, go to, you know, friendly countries. And we got a little bit of movement here. You know, go to friendly countries where <clears throat> they appreciate people's business and... They will continue to value that freedom. And now wrapping up one last one. It's not on the coin market cap list. This guy is called Maverick. And it is currently in the beta testing stage. Now, obviously, it looks very similar to Coinbase, which I really don't like. But, you know, they've got... No, get the fuck out of my MetaMask. 
um, they are doing the same thing. Oh, no. So, oh, shit. I skipped ahead. Okay. We'll come back to the other good one, but they are doing leveraged, decentralized. I hesitate to call it trading, but long, short, you know, your amount, your assets. Again, there's, this is still beta. Like it's not even, it's not real yet. And I'm really hoping that they hear from a lot of people that say, bro, quit trying to look like Coinbase. Look like a real damn exchange and maybe you'll do okay. I don't, would this work out? I don't know. What do you think? Do you think, you know, because Coinbase is like the biggest, most popular exchange. Do you think people would be on board with leverage trading on what is essentially like your regular coinbase you know basic not coinbase pro i don't know i think i think yeah people would but not enough to the the level that the company really goes anywhere big because anybody doing real trading you're not doing it off a freaking line chart you know what i mean like you're not doing it off a line chart you're not doing this super oversimplified just you know how much how how much leverage going in like you're gonna want a lot more than that that's especially for leverage trading i mean that's that's basically just irresponsible so i'm really hoping they expand all this a lot more but we're going ballistic math I like to, I at least like to see more of them existing. And then coming back, I actually accidentally skipped over this guy right here. This is Apollo X. Now, Apollo X actually has both. They have the decentralized exchange and a centralized exchange. I'm not going to go there because it basically just says, you know, log in or create account. But come over here. You got a very familiar looking uh, little trading view chart. Or actually, no, this is the original. This is the trading view. not terribly different you know then you got your depth chart and looking very familiar up here and you look at it and you think oh yeah i mean this is, it almost seems like a a pink and purple copy of bybit almost really and it seems to be at least doing a little something on the volume here you know very similar where you got your little slider for you know, how much of your account you want to open the trade with. Limit, market, stop limit. You know, cross and isolated. Got to connect the wallet to really do anything, but adjust leverage. Woo, buck 50. Good lower. Maximum position at current leverage, 50K. Definitely be careful with this guy here. If you're getting that much, um, if you're doing that much leverage, your liquidation price might be like, you know, negative 0.1% or something like that. So don't be irresponsible. You know, keep in mind the stuff that we've been talking about, specifically the trading psychology thing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not a rapid fire shotgun blast to the top, you know, it's a it's an endurance race. And you could throw a little, you know, you sprint here and there a little bit, you know, you got something uh you know, you got something good popping off, then you know, maybe you go in a little bit and then come right back out. But you are not going to want to have some friggin' 150x leverage trade, you know, swing trade going on for uh, multiple days in a row. God, the interest on that alone would be insane. But yeah, so that is uh, Apollo X.
And you know, like everything else, they got staking. I got some little rewards thing going on here. Epoch zero trade rewards. But again, with all these decentralized, you know, you got to hook up a wallet to really do anything. Because again, you know, it's not being stored on their server. <clears throat> And since it is partially a centralized, you know, they got some buy crypto options. Matter of fact, go to the centralized. Create account, deposit, trade. Yep, yep, yep. Gotta say the website looks pretty decent. No investor allocation, no team allocation, no pre-mining. Hmm. Kind of curious to see what the regular exchange looks like. Okay, so they got a... <laughs> They're basically copying by a bit. Just slightly different colors. I mean, you look at that. That is the Bybit app right there. Buy APX token. Hey, what happened to the top of the page? Why are we not scrolling? Page unresponsive. Ah, there we go. But your fancy little animations were fucking up, huh? Welcome back, bonus. Oh, welcome back. 50% fee rebate and 1k grand prize and cash vouchers. I just want to see. Let's see. Can we see the actual exchange? There we go. Okay, pretty much looking exactly like the decentralized one. Except centralized. And... You got your account rather than connecting your wallet. Convert. You know, if you guys are not familiar with convert, a lot of exchanges essentially have their own like internal swap, except rather than, you know, working the way a regular swap does with, you know, in some cases, the liqu liquidity pool or, you know, actually going on some like order books to swap with other people. Convert is actually a really good way to do it because, you know, say you've got, let's see, I don't know. Say you got some BNB and you want to get some uh, USDT, just do that, enter your amount, and it'll give you, you'll say, uh, valid for five seconds or something like that, like the, uh, the price. And then you just boom, hit convert. And you change it over, there's no fees, there's no, you know, anything. Like, you're not doing an actual trade. You're more or less just changing from one to the other. And it's done on the exchange's books rather than just, you know, going out there. So it's actually, you're basically just like walking up to the counter at the casino and you're like, okay, you know what, I need to change, you know, these $100 chips for a bunch of $20 chips. Same concept. Information. Funding rate history. Real time funding rate. Let's see what they're what they got going on here. Point oh one. Uh, they're not putting up any big big numbers. <laughs> Looks like point oh ones is uh, almost a point oh two. 0.03 negative on Luna. So shorts pay longs, huh? So they're trying to push people into longing Luna. What is Luna doing anyways? Uh, let's see. Now again, those are like eight hour funding. So you'd be looking more like on an hourly chart. God damn, what the hell? Oh. oh. I felt like I was going to sneeze. Yeah, I could see that. You know, getting close to, uh, you know, we rounded this hill. Come back down, maybe getting ready to head up on the next one. Looking down here at Market Cipher on the one hour. You know, money flow getting low, potentially hitting its low point 
I'd say at least somewhere in here. You know, no divergences yet. You know, it depends if this comes up or if we, you know, shoot back down. Because if you see here, at the tops of, you know, the dead space in between the momentum waves, best best thing to call that, you know, usually be like the tops up here, but the tops down here still have a downtrend going to it. So we'd want to see it either break through or potentially come down. Get another little big green dot and some snake eyes. Got three yellow X's. One more. Come on. Been shortchanging me on the yellow X's lately, and I won't stand for it. How am I supposed to have a four yellow X strategy if you only give me three? Ethereum. Oh, just freaking ugly. Just ugly. Doesn't really jive on the top side though, but oh, uh, I don't know. You could almost say just discount that one right there. But VWAP is coming down. And super choppy on the money flow. You know, you can see each time we cross over. <coughs> Four hour. You know, kind of got to this ring, started heading up a little bit. You know, potentially coming back up off of our little double dip apple bottom money flow. Did get the green dot. Came back up on the VWAP, although it's been, you know, very sketchy. Came up, bounced off, came up, broke through the tiniest little bit, came up. I'd almost expect maybe coming a little bit deeper on the next time it crosses down. You should kind of get in like a little trend like that going on the on the VWAP there. You know, like right here we had a little trend like that going with it. Kind of say, oh, I drew that terribly, but you know what I mean. All right. Last look at Bitcoin. I'm still playing with this. I flipped it around from the top of this swing over here. I still don't like it. And regardless, this is the micro view one, so it doesn't really mean anything on the four hour chart. Uh, let's see. We got a macro one. Let's see what's going on with that. So we pushed off into this uh, big old field of empty space over here, but we are pushing back up toward the spider line. It's probably the biggest event approaching. We also have this moving average crisscrossing it right at the same time. Let's see what happens with that. I don't know what the hell that's doing up there, but did I leave a bunch of scribbles? Don't need that anymore. Same uh, VWAP heading down on Bitcoin now. <clears throat> this is interesting. So our regular RSI is pretty much maxed out. Or no, sorry, we're not... Uh, Coming up to the 60. And. I forgot I got this stretched out. There we go. Coming up to almost exactly at the 60. While. The stochastic still riding the bottom. Which means. We are spreading. 
and we are, you know, heading up this RSI, heading up this guy actually kind of curving sideways, almost a little down. And obviously spreading. So I don't have much faith in, you know, a big move to the upside right now. Not much at all, not to mention we'll be crossing back into the negative on the VWAP here pretty soon. And the money flow is just all jacked up. You know, it's in the green now, but super sketchy. Probably going to maintain that sketchiness until tomorrow afternoon-ish, at, you know, evening at the latest. And then we will see. That's going to be the big question, and we'll talk about it in tomorrow's video a little bit, is, you know, where are we going after this weekend of sketchiness? Obviously, we've been generally trending up, minus our uh, little pump and dump there. But not much, not, not much. You know, overall macro trend, we are going up. But we do have... Lower highs. You can still say lower highs even from this one. In which you could still say lower highs from that one. So on and so forth. So if we were to zoom out, let me hide that. It looks to me like if we were seeing this on a 10 minute chart, let's say, and we were coming down. And now we're starting to roll the bottom. It could potentially mean heading back up to the upside. But the fact that it's on the six hour chart, you can't necessarily call it that easy, which even on the 10 minute, it depends. But on the six hour chart, you know, we're not we're not really in much of a a larger trend other than the fact that I mean we're just heading up because it's always been heading up but other than that you know we're potentially rounding out a bottom but the one thing you got to be careful with is you know when you start this upward angle is that if you're not getting a lot of volume you're not getting you know, pumps up to the upside and you start forming this wedge pattern, high likelihood that you can break down. Because with the patterns, you know, you come in from the top, generally come out to the bottom and you keep that same direction. But, you know, all bets are off when you start getting on higher time frames. Because, you know, now you're talking, you know, macro trends, which they don't really change quick and they don't really change easily. It's a larger sentiment of the entire market. But, you know, just as we're squeezing over here, squeezing over here. I'd say the, the good things that we have in our favor to the bullish side is the fact that this money flow is coming up. That's very good. These RSIs are generally heading up. That's very good. So, you know, obviously it's not a guarantee, but I'm, uh, I'm probably leaning a little bit more to the bullish side. This is a little bit concerning right here, though. This possible money flow rejection. You know, the fact that overall market sentiment really isn't super bullish. You know, it's not a lot of 
not a lot of FOMO, not a lot of big new retail. You know, right now it's kind of the, uh, you know, the day traders game at the moment. And you start getting the boring people playing and things get boring. Need to get the excitement back going. I think part of it too is everything that's going on in the world. You know, we have seen some excitement with, you know, the privacy coin situation, which has been awesome. Super pumped about that. Damn it. How many times do I got to hit escape? Shit. You know, over here on the daily, Monero. VWAP coming back up. Money flow in the green, but kind of flat. But the RSIs are together. I mean, it's basically a, a single line at this point. And it is pointing up now with our nice little green dot. And you could say, you know, been riding the bottom down here, potentially are starting to head back up. So that would be nice. Zcash over here, you know, again, as they try to ban people, freeze people's wallets, you know, take their crypto, try to overregulate. It's the decentralization and the privacy coins that are going to make a nice showing. Because the more you try to squeeze people, the more we want to slip through the fingers. And that is why I wanted to talk about these DEXs. Because the more they try to squeeze us, these are going to be the options to slip through those fingers. And be able to maintain that, that crypto financial freedom and liberty. So... You know, if you want to, even if it's just to play around with it, get used to it a little bit. Um, you know, you can come over here to Didix, come over here to Apollo X. Those are the two that I would largely use if I had to. I really don't have to at this point, just because we have, you know, our regular centralized exchanges. Um, but yeah. Just read up. I may. I don't, know, shit. I don't know. Maybe I'll do a video on like how to actually use these swaps, and we'll go in and try to swap for some, you know, some obscure gem that you can only get through the swaps. Let's see real quick here. What's popping off? Monero, sit, yep, shit, I was right. Waves, I'm gonna have to look into waves. I swear it's at the top of this list every freaking day lately. Thor chain, interesting. Sandbox, Decentraland, Tezos, Helium, Solana, okay. Uh, uh, Filecoin, BNB, BNB, that's interesting. FTX token, Chainlink, Algorand, Tron, Axie Infinity, Bitcoin, BEP2, huh? Interesting. I swear, you know, I start talking about decentralized exchanges and all of a sudden I'm seeing some of these, you know, swaps and swap tokens, wrap Bitcoin up here in the green when everything else is in the red. Interesting, interesting, interesting. V chain. Struggling trying to get into the green. Just trying to get there. All right. I think that's it for right now. If you have any questions or you want to see something specific, you know, holler at me in the comments. Otherwise, I bid you all a good day and happy hunting. 
May the wind be ever at your sails and your powder ever stay dry amidst your balls. I'm talking about shop, not your nuggets. Get your mind out of the gutter.